Alright guys, well I'm sorry for coming back to you with another freaking pan video, but it's been on my mind. You know, I told you one of the previous ones, I'd really like to get this thing down pat. Now we've seen a couple of things that, that work. Uh, I haven't found, the, the dishing I think works best for me, but I want, I think there's another way. I really do. I think there's a way I can make this happen. I've gotten a lot of suggestions, you know, put it in a form and press it and crush it. And I've tried things like that and it's just, you, you need to deal with the fact that the outside diameter of this plate has to either shrink or it has to remain the same and the inside has to expand I mean it's just it's just the way it is um, which means you are upsetting steel so I was th sitting here this morning I was going to start off doing some pans using the dish uh, method and I'm thinking there's got to be a way got to be a way and I got this theory so I'm going to go ahead uh, need a tool make a tool I'm going to make up a, a little tool here that might follow along with my theory uh, and then I'll be back and I'll explain what my logic is and then we'll give it a try so there's the tool that I made for uh, to support this disturbed logic that I have the logic is this here we go upside down again. we are trying to come up with a bend in a round circle. Now it doesn't have to be 90. I'm happy with an angle like that. Hell, I could even talk myself into a curve. All right, that's what we're after. Problem is, is that we have this flat stuff. And what I'm thinking is that over the top of this thing, I can take just this edge and round it a little. Now as I round it, I'm gonna be hitting downward and inward which in reality is going to be upsetting that section of steel so now we have a little bit of a round in there and I put my tool here and I hit downward and inward again and that's going to upset a little section of that steel and in reality in addition to bending this up I'm also moving the son of a bitch back so as I work on this edge of this circle I'm going to be moving it in, thus decreasing the diameter. I think it makes sense. Now, can I do that quick enough? Can I move? I mean, you're talking, you know, what, a quarter inch at a time, but a quarter inch to two inches is only eight times around, you know what I mean? Uh, can I do that and get enough upsetting and make it an inefficient process? I think I can, because as I come, come over my tool, I'm going to hit it at that angle. Good old vectorial analysis means that that angle of force has an equal. Well, not equal, but the force is distributed in those two directions. And that is upsetting. So, that's the plan. Let's give it a go. Cool. I don't know if you can see it or not. But I did take the grind and just flatten the top off a little bit with a decent radius here. I'm not sure if that was necessary, but I want, I think that's going to give me a kind of a flat spot so I can kind of work back and forth if I need to, uh, to play games. Let's get that tin heated and we will come back and see what the hell happens. What the heck happens here? I swear, I think... physics right there says I'm also upsetting. Is it going to be enough? That's the question. And I did, I was able to work a pretty large area, so I think I'm going to go all the way around with it. And the theory, the theory that I have is that, now I, yeah, I guess I can roll a little bit here. If I actually roll it into a curve, which I really don't want to, but if I actually roll it into a curve all the way around to the right diameter, then I could just flatten that back out. I, there's always a flaw in my ideas, but damn, that sounds good. I mean, right? If I wanted a very shallow pan, I'm already done, right? Something's got to be wrong here with this life. What the hell is going to be wrong with the logic? 
tells me I'm going to find the error of my ways. on that one. So I want to try to keep things as level as possible. Now I do notice a little cupping going on here, so am I, uh, I don't know. Let's finish up this spot that I did lightly. Go a little farther. I don't think that's a problem. I really don't. I don't know whether to keep that edge flat or not, but we're going to. I think if I continually flatten that edge, if I let the pan just continue to roll, uh, I, it's not going to have any uh, tor torsion, maybe, I guess would be the term, um, stability. But if I leave it flat, then that's going to provide stability. So the plan doesn't warp as I go around, I think. Man, I'm thinking too much today. Oh, so. That's, you see that bulbs there, that's upsetting, that's upsetting going on, for sure. Alright, so now, maybe I went too aggressive, but we got an area here that needs to be upset a little. started. Let me continue all the way around. I'm a little high here. We're going to see what happens. I'll be back once I make it all the way around. Oh, what? I got to move you. All right. So I got, I went all the way around and now where I have this bugaboo and this bugaboo, the things are not, are not happening right. So I think what we got to do now is go back to the beginning because now this pot, this diameter from the center here is smaller. But this one hasn't gone in since the first roll. You know what I'm saying? So now we gotta bring that back in again. I think I'll go around the outside rim one more time. That'll help that outside rim get caught up. And what I'm gonna do now is just come back out. Same technique, bring that outside rim back in. And try to get that bucket to ride away. Yeah, 
cleaned up and we'll see what we got. Alright, let's see what the hell we can do with this. Again, first time through, it's going to be a learning curve, so you want to mess things up. But I just want to roll. bottom to kind of get everything back in check. So I'm going to do that right now. What I want to do is get this stuff where it belongs in the diameter. So I'm a little narrow here, a little high there, a little higher there. I'm just going to start even that out because I was walking the wrong direction. But I'm going to go around one more time with that. This is upsetting right here. That's happening. All right. And that's to our advantage, I'm telling you. And it might even be in a good way where we're actually putting thickness into the bottom. Sucker's starting to look an awful lot like a friggin' frying pan, if you ask me. Very much so. So again, I'm working on the center diameter to try to get it in the right spot. I got one spot here left to do, so let's give that a go. Uh, let's put some different colors. Let's see what we can do. sizzle over my arm. I mean, it's messed up, but I think we're damn close. I just have to figure out now how to fine tune because like the bottom's too far up here. I'm too shallow there. I'm too far up there. What do I do? What do I do? I gotta think this over because this is really, really close. Thing, right here the lip is not rolled enough so I need to come back I need to make sure I don't know what I need I think I want to make sure that our lip height is about the same all the way around which is pretty darn close I'm telling you right now. it really is so I mean, if you look at it darn I mean it's for a first try, right, of course, I mean, you get more skilled at it. Because uh, if you know, right off the bat, I, I bit off more, more off of one than I wanted to. But damn, this is freaking close. It really is. Uh, 
Right here, this lip is a little low. I'm gonna steal a little bit from that, and then we're gonna clean this thing up, see what it looks like. Close we're gonna get it for this first try to prove it out. Now again, in the end, I wasn't doing anything different than what that, that dude did that uh, was upsetting on like my last pan video, um, except it was, I don't know, a little more controlled and working more area at once. So what I wanna do now is I wanna heat this entire friggin' pan, rim to bottom, and then start putting it into shape. I think I have steel where I want it enough where I can do that without wrinkling. It would be really cool if I had a form all right, exactly the right inner diameter and then with the right curve or angle and just be able to, to work this thing right out, um, which might be something I do down the line. I think my approach is gonna be to work the bottom, get it flattened out, and then come back with my other tool and just get the edges done. All right, we got a decent heat on this. Propane floor would be the best way. Raise that's in here. Let me heat that bottom up again. God, we're so darn close. We'll go back to the very first method, the first pan video, where the guy dropped the bowl and then brought it back down. I think that's what we need to do right here. I think that'll do the trick. And again, we're upsetting the center a little bit here, so we're combining both techniques. This one here comes out a little. I need to go back to the original tool and just roll that in one more time and I think we're going to be in good shape. I don't want anything else to move though. Everything else I kind of like where it is. So I'm going to go ahead and heat most of this pan. Or heat, cool down most of that pan. And just isolate that heat in that one spot. I'll be back. Let's see if we can last little sweet thing. If we can pull this off, I will be very happy. So I'm just trying to set that center around here. Cool, there. Sun 
tons of bitches, guys. There it is. Wow, that worked. It freaking worked. All right, we're going to uh, cool this down, and then we'll go back to our cold work. I think we can pull this off now. Do a little bit of cold work on this, see what we get. me as far as keeping my marks where this where they're supposed to be but See me. I'm just going on the anvil on the inside. spot right here so I got to work that out Dang. guys I, I think that was a heck of a lot easier how long to take eh, about 45 minutes it's a long time now of course the, the waviness on the top that's me all right that's just the practice holding the thing where it belongs to, uh, and I think a lot of that waviness there it probably caused me a lot more work than I needed to be but we'll we'll take the grinder to it and even it out uh, let me fix this inside piece here, and I'll be back to you. Let me mention a rounded log, which was, would be perfect. I don't have one. I'm not going to take the time to, to make one right now. Shoot. Where's my bad spot? So we're going to use the corner of this. I think that'll do the trick. It's just about the right size. Now, good enough for me on level. Now, I want to 
pull this thing down because I want to just fine tune in doing that leveling. I uh, just put a little bit of an egg over on this side, so I want to fix that. Just like that, I got a little egg right over on this side. because I took the log down here, dumbass. Oh, All right, sorry about taking the log away from you. There it is. All right, now again, we're wobbly woo on the top. The bottom looks really good. Um, I think that's friggin' awesome. I really, really like it. This one might end up going to the market. So I'll go ahead. We got the coolest thing about this. <clears throat> Number one, it was quick enough for me. I think I can make this happen, especially once I get used to it. Number two, I don't have all those hammer marks on the inside that I did from dropping the bowl. <clears throat> I don't have all of that distortion and crimping. Uh, even though I looked at the video last night, he does a good job of hammering all that off. Oh, but I didn't have to do that. All right, it's all there. And uh, it's almost exactly the pan that I wanted. We're just gonna even out these, uh, these humps and I'll put the same handle on this one as I did the one yesterday uh, with that 3 8 rod. I really like that. And yes, I'm gonna weld it because I want a welded handle. It's more secure and they don't have the rivets in the way and that's the way it is. So um, I don't see a problem doing that. I'll be back. Is that Chandler dude? All he did is make frying pans. Uh, I think this will be the last frying pan video you see unless I find something totally crazy. But there it is. I think that is the best pan that I've made. Now of course there's learning curve, right? Some, is it just because I've made three of them? Nah, I don't think so. This technique I really liked. I liked it a lot. Uh, it's much cleaner on the inside um, as far as hammer marks and things like that goes. I got a much deeper pan. I'm a little wibbly wobbly, but I think that's part of the character. This is my trademark handle. Do not cap it. This one's mine. I like it. Yeah, I welded the son of a bitch, but I, I think from a cook's perspective, we don't want those damn rivets there. We want the thing clean and ready to rock and roll. It sits great, you know what I mean? It's not handle heavy in any way. So, right. my verdict, that was the magical piece. Science, physics, right? Vectoral analysis. You hit in like this, there's two forces, one in and one down. And I was upsetting that steel. In some cases, it started to roll a little bit. And that got back into the other guy's way of kind of upsetting. But uh, in most cases, I mean, this thing just kind of rolled. All right. And if I, and I the, the thing that I, that, because uh, I got a couple more of these to make today, yay. Um, take the same amount, go around. I think I went around, what, three times, something like that, but it took no time at all. Nothing like doing those upsets. So there is the old school forge method. That's what you can call it. Old school forge signature frying pan method for making a frying pan. This one's going to be for sale for W New York. I think it's called a farm festival or something like that. This weekend, like the 27th, 6th, 8th, something like that. No more frying pan videos. And I'm not going to cook it. I will go season it before the show. Take care. I uh, am really glad this turned out. Thanks. Catch you next time. Alrighty, once again, Chandler interrupts the ending of his video. Look at my dirty ass face. Because... I showed you in this video a new method of creating a frying pan, the old school forge method. And I thought I'd introduce you to a couple of more of my friends. So there's one we saw in the video. There's another one. Nice deep one. Same size pan. Deeper. And dun -da -da -da, the return of a 12 inch using all the same method. With a little learning involved. So uh, by no means are these top of the line, holy cow, give Chandler a, uh, an award, pans. 
but there you have it so that proves that the technique works a lot of freaking work I mean they're not perfect they're not totally round there's hammer marks sons of bitches but they're sellable for sure and I don't know you know I don't know what these things go for I, you know what good ones go for you know a couple hundred bucks so maybe uh, maybe 175 75 something like that but um, I picked up, I changed the technique a little bit and I was able to get to gather a little more height in the, uh, in the process, but I thought I'd interrupt and show you that the old school forge technique has reproduced. Now I'm freaking tired. I, I, I think, I don't know what time it was, but I think they took me two hours of freaking pan. It's a lot of work. But anyway, if you've, if you've seen enough. Hey, um, no more pan videos. No more pan. As always, thank you for your support. Oh, somebody asked in the other video what happens to the first pan. It's sitting at home. I seasoned it and I hung it up. I haven't even used it. The, the pan I made yesterday is at home and that's where it'll stay. I'm not going to sell it probably. Um, so th that's where those are. And I'm out of here. Really. Goodbye. It's Saturday, Sunday. Guess what? Tomorrow's Monday. We get to start the week all over again. But I only got four freaking days before the show. So, but. Hey, there's what? A couple hundred dollars worth of inventory, and I bet you people will like them. Especially with that sexy ass handle. Goodbye.